hey, you know the saying, what doesn't kill us makes us stronger? Well, quite honestly, it makes perfect sense in the world of fasting. Now, today, I'm not going to talk about fasting from the fat loss side of things. I'm going to talk about fasting from the side of resilience with our cells and for our body's ability to truly be just masters at avoiding all kinds of stress when we're not fasting. So this is going to be a really interesting video. So pay close attention because you're going to learn a lot and you're going to have some tools that you can use when you're fasting. Hey, I'm Thomas DeLauer. I'm the lead trainer and the lead nutritionist over at sixpackabs.com. I'm also the creator of the internet's leading intermittent fasting program, Science Based Six Pack, which you can find down in the description below. So today, let's go ahead and dive into this and you'll have a whole new world of knowledge when it comes down to fasting. You see, fasting does make us stronger. One of the whole reasons we should fast is simply because we're trying to get our bodies to adapt to stress. It sounds kind of crazy, but I mean, when we work out, we're exposing ourselves to stress so we get stronger. But when we're fasting, we're allowing our cells to be a little bit stressed out so we get stronger too. We just have to kind of reframe how we look at it. So in this video, I want to dive into one particular study that was just really interesting. Okay, so this study, what it did is it took 24 individuals. So these 24 individuals, they had to do two separate bouts of intermittent fasting that were three weeks long. Okay, so one bout of intermittent fasting they had them just go straight through with intermittent fasting, no supplements added. The other phase of intermittent fasting that they did after that one, they did the exact same, except they added vitamin C and vitamin E into their protocol, powerful antioxidants. Now, before they had them do these fasts, they had them go for a week of just a control diet, regular eating just to make sure that everything was balanced. Now, they also didn't want these test subjects to be in any kind of calorie deficit overall. They didn't want to take a look at body composition. They didn't do anything like that. So what they had them do is on the days that they were eating normal food, they consumed 175% of their daily calories. They, that means they consumed a lot more food. They consumed 75% more than what they're supposed to. But on their fasting days, they only consumed 25% of their normal calories. What this did is it put them at a net neutral position at the end of the study. That way, we weren't paying attention to body composition. We were just focusing on the cells and what was happening there. So the first week that they did the intermittent fasting where they did not have vitamin C or vitamin E, subjects ended up having a pretty decent increase, 2.7%, in something known as SIRT3, also known as CERT3. CERT3 is a really interesting thing within the body. What they're finding is that CERT3 is not only very powerful for its antioxidant capabilities, but it basically stops free radicals from running amok throughout the body in the first place. And fasting, by exposing your body to stress, increased that. You see, CERT3 affects the mitochondria. And the mitochondria is where we process energy. But you may not have known this, but the mitochondria is kind of like a nuclear reactor. And when you're consuming food and the mitochondria is doing its whole thing of creating energy, it's creating a lot of byproduct. It's creating a lot of free radicals. Now these free radicals get exposed and leave through the electron transport chain. They just leave and they go throughout the body. But this CERT3 helps the body collect this. It helps the mitochondria collect that oxidative stress, those reactive oxygen species that would normally leave. So it collects them and contains them so they don't leave and run amok throughout your body. So fasting actually increased CERT3 which therefore made it so that these reactive oxygen species couldn't go out and cause damage throughout the body. So by fasting and by stressing ourselves, we made it so that our body can be less stressed later on. But here's where things get really interesting. The next phase, the next intermittent fasting period they had them do, they had them consume vitamin C and vitamin E, powerful antioxidants. Guess what? No change in CERT3. They did not have an improvement in their overall antioxidant capabilities. Why? Because they consumed an antioxidant during their fast that was absolving some of the stress that they should have been going through. Basically, it gave them a leg up at a cellular level. They may not have known that. They probably didn't feel a darn thing. But the fact is, at the cellular level, their cells weren't having to work as hard because they already had something in there to give them a little bit of antioxidant overall protection. Pretty darn fascinating. It shows that when we're fasting, we should really do our best to just keep it clean. Because sometimes even the simple polyphenols and things that we consume through various things might actually be throwing things off. Now, if you're fasting for body composition and fat loss reasons, it's a little bit different. But if you're fasting for the overall benefits when it comes to longevity, when it comes to health, when it comes to immune system, 
you might just want to keep it as clean as possible, but definitely don't be taking antioxidants. So no vitamin C, no vitamin E, heck, even be careful with vitamin A. Anyhow, this is nothing related to body composition, but at the end of the day, it's something pretty darn fascinating, and it's starting to show exactly what calorie restriction and fasting can do for all kinds of different things within our bodies. As always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here with sixpackabs.com, and I'll see you soon.